Hello, Central New York. Welcome to Off the Record with your weekly highlights of Delaware County news from The Reporter, the county's finest news source. I'm Andrew Cantor, coming at you with the latest of what's happened and happening in the county this week. This edition of Off the Record is brought to you by Decker Advertising. If you've got a school or a business or a team you want to promote, a Facebook post is not going to do it. You want to get the word out with banners and t-shirts and lawn signs and car magnets and more of that stuff. And the more often people see your message, the better they'll remember it. So give a call to Decker Advertising. You'll be surprised how little it can cost to create a custom signs, clothing, and all sorts of other products. Get a free estimate and maybe some great ideas too. Call them at 607-746-2178 or visit dckr.com. And now here's this week's news in Delaware County. If you've got a dog in Hamden that's not registered, you might be looking at paying a higher price if you get caught. The council there voted to enact late fees for dog licensing, and this time it plans to enforce them. See, there's already a law in place that fines unlicensed dog owners 50 bucks for the first offense, 75 bucks each time after that. But dog control officer Chris Bodo says it's never enforced. So if they get caught, people just pay the four bucks, get a license, and that's it. Under the new law, there's a $10 per month late fee for licensing. So if uh, Fido's license is six months overdue, you'll be shelling out 60 bucks plus the cost of a license. Will it work? Now, well, when Delhi made a change like this, its list of delinquent dog licenses dropped to zero. Some folks on Clark Street in Colchester aren't happy that one of their neighbors, a guy named Thomas Markert, 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 Markert. Anyway, Thomas Markert owns a business that uses some heavy equipment. They're claiming that the heavy equipment, by which we mean some big trucks, is damaging the road and somehow also their driveways and utilities. Anyway, they want the street closed to heavy machinery, period, which would put Markert out of business. But here's the twist. Thomas Markert's mother is Julie Markert, who happens to be on the Colchester Council. And when the council looked into the complaints about her son, they determined that there's no extra wear and tear on Clark Street and the, quote, constant stream of trucks well, it wasn't really constant at all. They concluded that if they put restrictions on Clark Street, they might have to put them on every street, which would be a huge hassle. So instead, the council voted to tell the residents, sorry, they weren't going to take any action against Markert's son. A big commercial solar project looks like it's coming to Hancock. The Delaware County Planning Board, peace be upon them, recommended approval of a proposed 15 and a half acre of solar panels on a vacant site just north of the Hancock Golf Course. The project will produce about 5 megawatts of electricity, which is enough to power at least a few thousand homes, and all without a speck of carbon and a, not a drop of noise. And the panels will only be about 8 feet tall, so neighbors will hardly be able to see them. So who's going to get this electricity? It's going to use NYSEG's grid to send the power to people who are enrolled in Delaware River Solar's community solar program. Assuming the plan does get the thumbs up, it'll take about six months to complete, and they're even going to wait until the timber rattlesnakes are inactive. And that's not to protect the workers, it's to protect the snakes. Anyway, if people turn out not to want the cheap, clean power, there's a plan on file for Delaware River Solar to dismantle it. The saga in Franklin over Jonah Shaw's plan to turn the old Kellogg Elementary School into a light manufacturing facility and event-slash-hotel facility has hit a snag. Forget about the manufacturing side, there's no problem there. The issue is the event space and the hotel rooms. The Franklin Planning Board thought Shaw was building an event space for things like weddings or corporate meetings, and there also happened to be some rooms available that could accommodate about 116 people who were attending the event the hotel rooms wouldn't be available for just anyone to rent. But Shaw's application sounds like he wants permission for a hotel that happens to have an event center next door, and the planning board was iffy about that idea. They're not sure if they want to get permission for a hotel, even if it could only be rented out all at once, like to one large group. In other words, they were okay with an event center that had sleeping space for attendees, but they don't like the idea of what sounds like a big hotel that could be rented by, say, a group of families attending baseball camp in Cooperstown. If Shaw wants that, the planning board wanted some changes. 
They all finally agreed that only 38 guests would be allowed to stay at the facility and there could be no more than 250 attendees at any events. They also wanted assurances that the facility wouldn't be used to house homeless people or, God forbid, migrants, because Delaware County is absolutely terrified of migrants. Shaw may build an inn, but there's no room there for those kinds of people. There's still some more issues to be ironed out, including making sure there's enough water available, and Shaw gets the right kind of insurance, and making sure guests don't wander where they're not wanted. So Shaw and the planning board will meet again in November. And now some congratulations are in order. First to former Walton Town Clerk Rhonda Williams, who retired in September, the Walton Town Council recognized her for 20 years of service to the community. Then to Titan Drilling in Arkville, which is celebrating its 60th year in business this year. And finally, to WCDO's Nate Lull, whose podcast was named the best in the Southern tier by the New York State Broadcasters Association. The CDO was also recognized for the best public service announcement for its talking can recycling message and a Serving New York Award for the Nate Lull Scholarship. Did you know that podcast listeners like you can try the online version of The Reporter free for a month? Now you do. Okay, a month-long digital subscription is five bucks, but we've got a $5 promo code, so you can basically get the month for free, and then you can decide if you want to keep getting your local news, or you want to remain, you know, ignorant and confused like the people who turn to Facebook. All you do is subscribe to The Reporter at The Reporter website, and that's the-reporter.net. Then you use the promo code SAVE5. That's all caps, S-A-V-E, and the number 5. And that gives you the subscription free for a month. And after that, we hope you stick around. And now we turn to Looking Back. News from The Reporter 100, 100 years, years ago, ago this, this week. week. Our Walton lady has discovered a unique method of capturing rodents. She bought a quart can of molasses, used part of it, and then set the can away for future use. When she went to get some of the molasses later, she found the can full of mice who were entangled in the sweetness and stayed there. Any lady in Walton is at perfect liberty to use the new discovery in the mouse catching line. In travel news, Mr. and Mrs. William Chase returned Tuesday evening from an extended motor trip to Katona, Union Hill, and other places. They covered some 600 miles or better and did not have a mishap until nearly home. But then, while coming down Factory Hill near the Novelty Works about 8.30 o'clock that evening, Mr. Chase's Jewett car and an Oakland driven by Adam Cammer of Colchester Station collided. A fender on the Chase car was badly jammed, Blinding headlights doubtless caused the accident. On the crime beat, Officer C.A. Wheaton arrested two drunks from Lordville last week and placed them in the village lockup. They were brought before Judge Flower the next morning and pled guilty to public intoxication and were fined $7 each. They were accompanied by two other fellows who say they came along as secretary and treasurer of the company. The secretary acted his part and the treasurer paid the bills. Finally, in horrific accident news, Henry Lambert of the Walton Auto Sales Company Force caught the thumb of his left hand under the body of a car while helping to assemble Fords on Monday and had the end of the thumb taken off back to the bone. Dr. W.B. Morrow was called to attend. Coming back to 2024, there's more Delaware County news in this week's edition of The Reporter. You can read about why Hamden's budget and taxes are going to jump next year a lot higher than expected. You'll also meet Delaware County's new Commissioner of Social Services, and you can see why it's all about water in Walton, from infrastructure upgrades to pool repairs to redirecting rain runoff. And that's just for starters. Remember, to get all the news that matters to you and your Delaware County community, subscribe to The Reporter at the-reporter.net or call 607-464-4009. We'll see you next week.